I want to say they're not just being marketed to by the companies, they're being marketed to by practices and individual injectors, right? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because it's like you use the word cell, right? But it's all the patients in any dermatology practice in a plastic, in any plastic surgery practice, in any medical spa, medical environment where you offer these things, every single patient in that practice, whether they're there, whether they're there primarily for a cosmetic procedure or not, they are all 100% your customers. And so you want to have the um, skill set and the comfort level to be able to say that you can, you know, actually service their, you know, needs because otherwise that patient's going to go elsewhere. Like mm-hmm. for instance, I'll just give you an example that in the world of dermatology, every single patient I see for acne, I see lots of acne patients, but I learned a long time ago that I was not just seeing that kid for acne, that kid's parents are my cosmetic patients and I would want to capture them. And now the kids that I was treating for acne years ago are now my cosmetic patients as well. So it, it really is a tool that you want to become adept with. And it, you know, it makes you a little more valuable in the workplace also, if you can do both medical and cosmetic. Well, and Joe, what I love what you said about that is simply the fact that different people wake up at different points in their life and have different needs. And being aware of where patients are all along that lifestyle continuum can help you not only be a more successful provider, but a much better provider in tune with meeting patient needs and helping them be aware of what's coming down the road. Nobody likes waking up and looking in the mirror one day and saying, oh my gosh, what happened to me? (laughs) You know, we like to know as we age, here's what's going to happen in the aging process. And even if you're seeing a therapeutic patient to be able to talk to them about, you know what? Yes, you've had a couple of years. Now you're having adult acne. And this is something that happens as we go through different hormonal changes. Here are other things that may happen that you may notice with your skin as well. And it's a great way to simply turn that education for a therapeutic patient into a, at least an eye-opening opportunity for what they can expect and additional things that they can ask you about as a, as a provider. And that's why getting good training experience and, and training with someone who has that great training is going to be very important. Um, the final thing that I'll say is when you're looking at evaluating training places, look at what resources they offer you. Do they give you things to look at and teach you how to um, go beyond just that weekend training? Or are they just like, come in, give me your money, do this weekend training, and then you're done. And I'm going to give you a certificate. Um, that's another thing we talk a lot about. There is no certification for aesthetic medicine um, for injecting other than the International Society for Plastic and Aesthetic Nurses, um, ice span sponsors the CANS exam um, through Plastic Surgery Nursing Board, and it is the only board certification for aesthetics. And I want people to know that if you hear other people say, oh, I'm certified, they may have a certificate of attendance, but unless they are CANS certified, they do not, ha- they do not have a board certification. So Joe, if you're okay, this is the only part of what I'm gonna do that will be a, a tiny bit of, I don't even wanna say a commercial, but maybe just a, a tiny little bit of explaining what we do at Titan. No, um, I think dive dive in here and <laughs> explain it thoroughly so that we can you know, make sure that people appreciate the value of this resource because this resource is what we need to develop the foundational knowledge that to be set up for success. So thank, thank you, you for taking time and going through this. Well, I, I, as I said, I am not an injector. Um, I am purely the business side of this. My clinical director is a nurse practitioner down in Florida. Many of you may know Kevin Harrington. He speaks at many meetings. He has been injecting for more than 20, almost 25 years now. Um, actually was a sales rep early on when Botox was first brought to market and has been injecting as a nurse practitioner um, since the early 2000s. The exciting thing about having Kevin is that we are able to work together to be able to provide resources for you and for people who want to transition or add more aesthetic medicine into their careers, really looking at the, the specialty from 
from 20 years or more of experience. So we have two courses that we brought to the market. Um, the first year I started Titan, I had a lot of people who would call and say, I went to this weekend training course and I'm certified and I've sent my resume to every place in town and no one will hire me. Can you help? Well, A, I can't because you've already sent your resume to every place in town. But secondly, what I found was that they didn't have the foundational skills. They knew where the insertion points were, but they didn't know how to be an aesthetic provider. So what we did, I created um, this, this, this Titan Injector Development Program specifically to guide people before they go to hands-on training. So we have two courses. The first is called Preparing to Be an Aesthetic Injector. It is more than 10 hours. It is a book that I wrote called Preparing to Be an Aesthetic Injector. It's an ebook with more than 65 links. And it really covers everything from the history of aesthetics in the United States, really thinking about the beginning with collagen and with Botox Cosmetic. We really talk a lot about the Carruthers and how their happy accident um, in Jean's practice of treating her patients with blepharospasm and stir business, had patients coming back and saying, well, my eye still looks great, but can you do that again? Because those lines between my brows went away. And I actually have in the book, a link to one of their 10 year anniversary um, interviews that talks about the kind of unveiling of what Botox Cosmetic could do on a more aesthetic um, opportunity and how they went to Allergan and said, let's look at this. I actually talked to one of the first Botox product managers and he said when the Carruthers went to one of their first meetings to talk about this new potential cosmetic use that they were laughed off the stage. And you think about Alistair, who's one of the greatest dermatologists out there and them trying to change the mindset and what it was like back then in 1999 when they started enrolling patients in those original Botox cosmetic clinical trials. And then what we're looking at now where everybody just kind of takes it for granted that at a certain point in life, oh yeah, Botox, no big deal. So what I wanted is I want people to understand everything from how did we go from having a couple of plastic surgery nurses injecting in surgery offices to the creation of the, the core physicians within aesthetics to the rise of med spas and then now it seems like we have a med spa on every street corner. So how do we really dig through all of that and really use you all who have such great clinical backgrounds and credential yourself to patients? So that ebook goes all the way through history. It goes through the role of the aesthetic provider and who you work with. It goes through all the products, all of the links to all of the companies, what they can do, what they can't do in terms of helping you learn. It has an entire chapter on resources of things that you can do on your own to look at anatomy, to look at injection technique, to look at books that you can buy with. Um, I'm gonna have to add the uh, Dermalorian webinar podcast to that list. It has uh, magazines that you can sign up for. It has an entire chapter on how to get understanding about awareness in your market. And then it has an entire chapter on compensation. And I jokingly call that the how much money you're not going to make your first year as an aesthetic injector chapter, because it is very much a residency that first year. You have to bring revenue in before you're going to make any money. It's very different from being in therapeutic medicine, where as an MPRPA, you can bill insurance for that office visit, even if you do nothing other than, great, let's run some tests. In aesthetic medicine, if you're not providing a service or selling a product, there's no revenue coming in. So it's a little bit different and, and just a thought about that. Um, it also includes a checklist of things that people can do to develop their skills. And then the biggest part of this is the Complete Face Cadaver app. And this cadaver app is 10 hours and more than 100 online videos of facial cadaver and anatomy work. This was created by Peter McCallan and Stephen Liu, who are both plastic surgeons down in Australia. And once you have this app, you have access to it forever. It's not a subscription or a one-time thing. It is a resource that once you buy, you can use it for everything else you do within dermatology and a really beautiful resource and tool to have. So once you finish that, it's about 10 to 15 hours worth of work. If you already have a job, it is a $700 program. So we try to keep things very cost-effective. If you need injector coaching, if you need to find a job and you want us to work with you to help find an opportunity, um, that is $1,000 to work with one of the Titan placement coaches. So again, we try to keep it very, very reasonable. The second part of this course is called Teaching Your Brain to Inject. And I'm a big believer that you have to teach your brain before you teach your hands. It's the same thing you guys do in dermatology. You have to have all that information in your mind to be able to use and translate that to each patient you see, because it's not cookie cutters with, you know, all of the injection patterns may be the same in the 
um, FDA approved labeling. But when you're looking at a patient, you need to be able to, to do a facial assessment on that patient. You need to be able to identify what product you want to use. You need to be able to think, is this a surgical candidate? Is this a toxin? Is this a filler? Is this a energy device patient? And you need to make the right choice to meet that patient's need and concern. So we go through all of that, including adverse events and including patient consultation, treatment plans and the patient journey. All those things involved in treating an aesthetic patient that are, you know, I always joke, it's about 10% of being an aesthetic provider is actually injecting the patient. The 90% is the selling, it's the assessment, it's the treating the adverse events, it's the marketing, it's the, you know, how do you talk to them about price? And so what we try to do is give you a package of all of those skills. We know that for many of you, you have somebody in your practice that can teach you the hand-on injecting skills. We also have a great resource for that within Titan. But what we wanna do during this teaching your brain to inject course is teach you the why behind injecting. And Joe's probably going, that would have been nice when I started. But what we do is you have three to four hours of work each week. And then we have one hour of interactive webinar with one of the Titan faculty members each week. So you have a cohort of people to share information with. Our faculty trainers are Kevin Harrington, our clinical director. It is um, Sheila Anderson, who if many of you are up in the Pacific Northwest, you probably have known Sheila from Skin Spirit. She is a fantastic injector and has been around for more than 25 years. We have um, Tracy Hada, who is actually up in Canada and is, owns THMA Consulting and does one of probably the premier injectable training organization in Canada. And Rhonda Foley is a PA in the um, Omaha area who used to own one of the largest med spas in Nebraska. So we're really um, proud of what we've developed. We have weekly projects that you have to do. This is not an easy course, but when you finish about the 40 hours, um, most people find that they are ready at this point to go in and do hands-on injection training, that it goes very quickly and very comfortably because they know the anatomy, they know the techniques, they know the products. Um, and one quick thing that I will mention is that there is um, the opportunity for 20 hours of CME for teaching your brain to inject. So one is $2,200 without CME and $2,800 with CME. So once you're done, getting that foundational knowledge, we want you to go do hands-on. So you can either train in clinic with a practice mentor. Aesthetic Advancements does great foundational training and it provides CME. Palette Resources is another good online course that also has live beginning, intermediate, and advanced um, hands-on courses. They do a lot of beautiful courses that combine um, MPPA injectors with physician injectors. And a lot of those are um, very, very highly rated by a lot of people that go to those. We also have a listing on the Titan clinical training page of a lot of other injectors who are um, have been injecting for years. They're all national trainers for any of some of the big companies. They all have um, everything that I went through on that, how to evaluate training. They're all active injectors. They all have established curriculum. They all are um, people that I would all let inject me and I feel very comfortable referring any of them to you all. There are also great ways to get trainings at national meetings like ASDS, AAD, and then of course at Joe's um, Durham MPPA meeting. And then there are several aesthetic meetings where you will also see that they will have hands-on training classes. Um, but my recommendation is always do a one-on-one -on -one training, whether it be with one of the first three or four or whether it um, be with a mentor, because doing that specific hands-on in-clinic training will really help cement everything you've learned foundationally and take it to the patient. But don't let your training stop once you've done that foundational training. These four anatomy training, you know, complete face app is what we use for foundational training, but there is an advanced section as well. Jonathan Sykes, Chris Surick, Sebastian Cotafano all have amazing anatomy training courses that I cannot recommend highly enough. Julie Bass Kaplan is a nurse practitioner in Oregon and um, Redding, California. She does a course called Heads and Breakfast, where it's a very small group environment of doing um, cadaver anatomy work. So there's some really neat ongoing anatomy you can do. And then if you wanna continue your training, I highly recommend um, Aesthetic Blueprint and Swift Beauty are wonderful national courses. Swift Beauty is obviously taught by Dr. Arthur Swift and they have courses um, several times throughout the year. By College is over in London and then Stephen Liu does aesthetics. This was, it's 2023 this year, but his meeting is down in Sydney, Australia. Um, my partner, Kevin, just got back from that yesterday and he came home and said, Oh my gosh, it was amazing. So when you start looking at wanting to go into aesthetics, make sure you have a training plan. Decide the path that you need, 
Identify what you have for internal resources versus what you need externally. Identify what your job expectations are gonna be post-training, and then make sure that you include that hands-on training as part of your development plan within your existing job. Um, I'm gonna go through the compensation stuff very quickly, and we may have more hands or live questions with that. This is a compensation survey that Titans conducted each year for the past five years. The most recent year was for the 2021 data year. And what we found that year, um, you have to inject more than 50% of your time in order to be considered for inclusion with this data. So we really do try to make it um, the data for those who are full-time injectors. So take that with a grain of salt if you have someone in your practice that is injecting you know, not full-time, like maybe Joe does. So the average full-time injector makes about $199,000 a year. The caveat with this is that those injectors bring in on average $1.1 million in patient revenue. So what you see is that revenue production is an incredibly important part of compensation for aesthetic injectors. And when you look at the amount of revenue that is generated by the practice um, or by the provider, that is really what um, leads to what the compensation is, along with how long they have been injecting and how long they've been with an existing provider. One of the other things I thought you guys might find interesting is that when we look at where non-physician injectors are working, we're looking at RNs and Ps and PAs, that 66% of those are in medical spas, 26% are in plastic, in facial plastic offices, and a very small percent in dermatology and other medical practices. So definitely an opportunity for those of you who wish to increase that opportunity for injecting within your dermatology practice. So a couple of things to think about in terms of revenue. If you want to think about injecting within your practice, how will that procedure revenue impact your practice? Will you be the only one doing it? Will you be adding to other people that are doing it? And where are you going to be more useful to your practice? Do they need you more to do therapeutic procedures or is aesthetic um, procedure needs something that the practice has, and you can fill a practice need. So that's where you really want to also think about what would the importance to the practice be of you adding injectables or aesthetic medicine to your practice? Is there an existing patient base? Um, is there patient demand? The patients ask about it in your practice. And will the practice support aesthetic treatment goals? I know there are some uh, dermatology practices that are very happily therapeutic dermatology practices, and that's completely fine. So double check that and make sure. But in this day and age with aesthetics being so ubiquitous throughout social media and in our society, I do think it's certainly a great opportunity that if it's something you're interested in doing, approach your practice about adding it because it may just be that nobody else has been interested in it. Other things you're gonna to have to think about is who's gonna pay for the training? because you're gonna to have to really set aside, most injectors will tell me that they spend anywhere between 10 and $15,000 of their own money to do injectable training, taking courses, going to meeting, um, really working on updating their skills. Can you replace a former injector? We're getting in this age where people are just saying, you know what, I'm done quiet quitting, I'm quitting. And, and maybe there's an injector that it's time for them to move on and you could replace a former injector. And then make sure that the revenue you're gonna bring in is going to, be worth it when you think about the high cost of goods. That's what Joe was talking about when he says, you know, you really have to understand that about 50% of what you are going to bring in is gonna go right out the door in terms of the cost of goods. So in final thinking about compensation, I want you to realize that injector compensation doesn't vary as much by region as it does by revenue production. Now you're gonna have higher in like San Francisco area, obviously New York City area, but all across the country, it's primarily dependent upon the injector makes more based on how much more they bring into the practice. Secondly, NP and PA injectors traditionally do make more because they do have diagnosing and prescribing abilities and they can add more um, utility to the practice. The cost of goods for aesthetic procedures is very high and this can really impact revenue goals. That's actually part of why in a lot of dermatology practices when the private equity groups bought them, they kind of decreased the um, aesthetic services because it looks really bad on a PL because the cost of goods is so high. Um, the other thing is, will you have the same pay structure when you're doing aesthetic procedures as when you're doing therapeutic? So those are all questions you're going to have to discuss with your practice. So think about, does demand exist? Where and how will you train? And will your practice support aesthetic medicine? And then 
If we can help you with Titan, let me know. So Joe, I'll turn it back over to you and you can open it up for questions. Oh, Mary Beth, thank you. That was just so informative. And I cannot emphasize the value of that training and the, um, the, the hole that it helps fill in getting us ready, you know, newer PAs and MPs or existing experienced PAs and MPs, just getting us the experience we may need to feel comfortable and then become confident in, um, in injecting. And the focus on anatomy and safety is unparalleled. And so it really, both of the opportunities are really great options. Um, in fact, I might jump in and take a look at one of those the anatomy apps. I, and I've seen some of the people oh you mentioned in some of the yeah. anatomy. Um, you know, you don't know what's beneath the skin until you do the anatomy and the cadaver work. And, you know, you can't put a needle in anywhere unless you have some idea of, you know, the no fly zones, if you will. And so. I love uh, the people really that say, I want to get injected, but don't bruise me. I have a wedding this weekend. And then you look at the facial vasculature and you're like, uh, where do you want me to put that needle where there's not going to be a vessel? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, you know, it's experience is everything, but you got to start somewhere. So right. um, these are incredible resources that can really um, provide, you know, set everybody up for success as they uh, dive into this field. And there's no doubt that there's a need. Uh, like you mentioned, the med spas and the companies around the country that are expanding and opening up med spas, they're hiring uh, NPs, they're hiring PAs, they're hiring RNs, and most of them, they do need NPs and PAs because yeah. they have to do the good faith exam before the patients can be treated. So um, they're really in a sweet spot for um, NPs and PAs right now, and then the nurse injectors with um, experience, the RNs that um, are up to speed and know what they're doing. They're a huge part of the team. So there's a great opportunity um, at this point. So um, one of the questions that's coming in is, let's see here. All right. I'm going to just read this off, Mary Beth, and then we can go after it here. Um, this person feels much less overwhelmed with the training options that are out there um, and is thankful for the, um, the options that you provided. So thank you again. And then um, this is a clinical year uh, PA. Uh, what's your advice on the timeline in which these trainings should be completed for someone who's not yet in the workforce, but trying to get into the derm aesthetics world? Uh, would you do it right after licensure? as a good baseline knowledge, or would you wait until gaining experience? Um, I'll let you take the first crack at that, then I'll chime in if you want. Well, I was, I was laughing at that because I was gonna say the same thing. I, you probably feel the same way I do. I, I am a huge believer. If you're a, a nurse, if you're did, did stand up person as a PA. Uh, looks like they're finishing up their PA training. Okay. I, go get medical experience first. Um, the thing that we do find with people who start in aesthetics right out of PA school is that if you haven't had that real world um, medical experience, then sometimes you don't, your, your vision is not as broad because even though sometimes you're looking at, sorry about Toby, um, even though sometimes you're looking at these patients from an aesthetic standpoint, remember you still have to do the H&P. You still have to look for those medical issues first. These are still patients. This is still a medical practice. I know some of these places say they're boutiques or they're, they're stores. And I'm like, no, they're signing HIPAA forms. They're still medical practices. So I would work in any kind of medicine for a year or two first and then transition into dermatology or aesthetics. And Joe, do you, would you agree or do you have a different thought process? Well, I think that in terms of the training and the anatomy and the learnings there, you can dive right in and do that portion of it. Um, someone's asking now, would the $700 option be beneficial for someone that's been injecting for a few years, but has only been learning on the job? Well, my answer is 100% it would be worth it because of the anatomy and physiology 
the no-fly zones that you'll learn about through um, that resource, it's a drop in the bucket in terms of um, cost. It's less expensive than you're, you're going to spend going to a national meeting or another meeting where you may not get and a you have deep it forever. dive. Yeah. And, and, you, and have you have access to that mm-hmm. app forever, which is invaluable. Um, in terms of when to get, you know, when you should start it, it depends on your interest level and, you know, what you think you're going to be doing. And if you've got time and you haven't got your first job yet and you're studying for your boards, um, this is something you can add on. And then once you get into practice, you'll be a little bit of a step ahead because as you're doing your and learning your medical dermatology or you're in plastics and you're seeing patients, you'll be like, oh, yes. I remember these are some of those things that we saw. This is the, you know, the pre-gel sulcus. This is the nasojewel groove. And you'll, you'll be a step ahead because you'll be able to put together the um, face-to-face interaction with the patient with your knowledge, um, your background, fundamental knowledge of anatomy. And your eye, when you look at patients and talk to them, will start to become more and more um, acute and you'll get more experience in terms of, oh, I think I can help with this. Oh, I think I can help with that. Um, And you'll have a better idea of making recommendations uh, or selling, however you wanna say it for patients um, to help them attain their cosmetic goals when they ask questions or when they present to the office. Great point, couldn't agree more, yeah. So let's see, so yeah, we're. We're right at six o'clock and um, any other questions we have, we will take in and we will um, get back to people, we'll fire an email off so that um, we can make sure we address any additional questions. So I just want to take another moment or two to thank Mary Beth for helping create this resource and making it accessible to NPs, PAs and RNs that are uh, wanting to get into the aesthetic business. And um, a thank you to you for being such a wonderful resource for all of us. So Mary Beth, we will continue to partner with you and thank you and Kevin for doing what you guys do. Totally our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us tonight. We appreciate the opportunity to, and we're here to support any of the MPs and PAs out there. Thank you. So for everyone um, for the, from the Dermatology Education Foundation on behalf of all of us, uh, we wanna thank you for your time. Uh, subscribe uh, to our website, www.dermnppa.org.